I think the most special thing about the long rifle, at least in my experience, was it was the first bullet I ever shot. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmbleMart.com. I'm very excited to spend some more time with you today as we're going to discuss the history of the 22 long rifle caliber. When we started to prepare for this video, I was blown away by the amount of information and left turns there are about what remains to be the most popular caliber in the world, almost bar none. It's astounding how popular this caliber still is, and later on we'll talk about some of the characteristics that are probably going to make it that way in the next hundred years. When we started, I discovered why it was, and I never knew this before, BBs are called BBs because it, that history directly relates to the history of the 22 long rifle. Thanks to the absolute rock star gunsmiths at the Buffalo Trading Company here in Finley, Ohio, Josh and Dave, I have in my possession a flow bear action and barrel. This, believe it or not, was the birth of the 22 long rifle caliber. Flow bear in 1845 developed what he called a breech bullet. The concept of the breech bullet was pretty inventive. Basically what it was, was a percussion cap that had a conical looking little odd dude bullet on top, but it didn't have any powder. And therefore it made it extremely popular at arcades, indoor shooting galleries, indoor shooting ranges, and it was extremely popular with lady shooters. In fact, this is the top end of something that he called a parlor gun. Now, Interestingly enough, the breech bullet was 22 caliber. And it was very, very popular up until 1857 when Smith & Wesson was developing a bullet for its Model 1 revolver. They took some of the concepts that Flaubert had designed and came up with a round called the 22 short. The 22 short is very important and historical because it is actually the longest self-contained cartridge in American history, the 22 short. The date 1857 is a very significant date when you're talking about the history of the 22 long rifle. Around 88,000 Model 1 Smith & Wessons were produced between 1857 and 1865, which of course encompasses the Civil War. A ton of soldiers carried the Model 1 as a backup sidearm, though not issued by the government. It was typically done with a private purchase and could be stuffed anywhere as a method of last resort to defend yourself in a battle. The problem with the short was it didn't have a lot of power and it didn't work well in rifles at all, but it once again was used in shooting galleries, arcades and the like, certainly indoor shooting ranges, and people really liked the idea that you could shoot without a lot of recoil. Well, flash forward in time to around 1880 when the 22 Long was developed. Also a 22 caliber bullet, and as you can tell, longer case length had substantial more power. But what's important to keep in mind was this round was also developed for revolvers only and converted over to rifles. Now we have to get technical for a second. When you shoot a 22 caliber round, especially out of a rifle, due to the barrel volume compared to the chamber volume, all of the powder and gases are burnt up by the time the bullet leaves the barrel, it's already slowing down. What that means is there's very little noise, there's certainly very little recoil, and if you're hunting small game with the rifle, it didn't have a lot of overpenetration and messed the game up, say squirrel, that you were trying to preserve. But one of the problems with that is the round wasn't terribly accurate. So in around 1887 or 1888, and this is where a little bit of confusion comes in, the Union Metallic Cartridge Company on behest of the Stevens Company, developed what we now know as the 22 long rifle. Prior to that, the extra long was out, which was some sort of derivative of this, but the extra long didn't really go into popularity that much. You couldn't use it in revolvers very well, and people didn't like it. It had a lot of noise, everything you didn't want out of your 22. So Union Metallic, at the urging of Stevens, put a 40 caliber projectile on top of a 22 long cartridge, and what you have 
is the 22 long rifle that we know today. Now, if you look carefully, and we'll try to get some better video of this down the road, some people mistakenly believe that a long rifle is a 22 long with a stretched case. That's not true. It's longer in overall length or something in the bullet business called OAL because the, about the only way that you can get a heavier projectile is to make it longer, much the same way that 9mm 147 grain is longer than the 115 grain version. It is longer overall, same case, same powder charge. But here's where an unintended consequence of physics begins to start taking over the game a bit. This bullet in 22 long develops more inertia in the barrel than the lighter projectile in the long. And the result of that is it's extremely accurate out of a long barrel. And it was not with the long. And the weird thing was it actually goes incredibly well in pistols and revolvers. It's been my experience that when you start blending up a bunch of different bullets to get one, you would typically only end up with one or maybe two positive characteristics out of that recipe. It worked exactly the opposite with 22 long rifle. When you made that recipe, it started to do a lot of things well across a lot of different platforms. You can even have machine gun 22 LRs and they're out there. This is an amazing bullet based on its history and how many things came together to, for us to enjoy the round that we do today. A typical 40 grain 22 long rifle projectile runs right around 1,000 feet per second, but once again, due to its adaptability, you can find recipes where it runs up to 1,200 feet per second. In general though, right around 1,000, and you would typically expect to find 75 to 95 foot-pounds of energy with it. With the 22 long rifle, you also have a large capacity based on how much is in the case. It's very affordable to shoot. Well, that market goes up and down based on availability, and sometimes it's more expensive than others, but still a very, very affordable round for people that are shooting, which once again is one of the reasons why it's gonna to continue to be popular, at least for the near future. The 22 LR has a very odd sort of condition to the projectile, which is it runs what's called a healed projectile. The projectile after the heel is the same diameter as the barrel, 22 caliber. And we'll try to demonstrate there's a little bit of a cup or a taper to the back end of the bullet so it'll actually fit into the case properly and, and firmly, but it's an unusual shape. Back when I was in sales, a lot of customers would come in and there's a ton of confusion around the concept of whether or not a 22 long rifle can shoot 22 short and 22 long. The long and the short of it, you like what I did there, is it usually can. Some people will tell you if you fire too many 22 shorts out of your 22 long rifle, that it can cause some sort of internal damage to the chamber. I've never personally found that to be true, but if you guys can shoot me some information on it, I would gladly put it on the channel. My instinct is I've never heard of that, but it's possible. So back to what's in a label. If your rifle is marked LR, you certainly can shoot short and long out of it. But if you own a handgun, particularly a semi-automatic handgun, the long typically doesn't generate enough energy to work the slide. So that's probably a no. And obviously, by now you figured out if the long is a no, the short is a no. The best thing to do is read your owner's manual if you own a 22 long rifle caliber handgun and see what it says. If it says only fire 22 long rifle out of it, that's absolutely what you should do. Don't tempt fate, so to speak, because it could void the warranty and end up in catastrophic injury, and nobody wants that. Usually, your barrel, if it says S on there, that means short, whether it's handgun or long rifle. Please do not try to put anything else in your gun except what it was designed for. To me, that's the, almost the fifth rule of firearm safety is don't put anything in your gun it wasn't designed to fire. In 1888, we have the 22 long rifle. I think the most special thing about the long rifle, at least in my experience, was it was the first bullet I ever shot out at Boy Scout camp here in Findlay, Ohio. It was my first trip to Boy Scout camp for a week and I didn't get any other work done because once I found out they were shooting on the range, all the other merit badges went to the wayside and I spent the entire week laying in the prone shooting single shot bolt action rifle 22s. It was truly a special moment and I think there's a lot of people out there that would agree 
It's their almost seminal moment in their history with guns. It'll be forever special. And I look forward to the fact that many generations to follow will enjoy shooting this amazing bullet with an amazing history.